The reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together the singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation. Merry Christmas to all of you. We are grateful that you're here. 
We will serve communion this morning. It will be by intention. Receive the wafer and dip it into the wine or the juice and return to your seat, Susie, the side aisle. We believe that Jesus Christ is truly present in the elements of that holy meal today. And we invite all believers, regardless of your denomination, to share in that with us. And I'd invite you later on to sign the fellowship pads. Don't do that during my sermon. <laughs> If the Gospel of John, which I just read, was the only Christmas story in the Bible, things would look and be very different around Lake Lutheran Church this season. Can you imagine if the Gospel of John was the only Christmas story, can you imagine what our Sunday School Christmas program would be like? Which kid do you think would get to portray flesh, or um, the word becoming flesh? And how exactly would that happen? And then think about all the Christmas carols you wouldn't get to sing if John were the only Christmas story. A little town of Bethlehem, throw that up. Silent night away in a manger, angels we have heard on high, no way land. One good thing, one good thing, however, if John were the only Christmas story in the Bible, one good thing would be that we wouldn't have to go through the community arguments over putting up a crash in a city park. Because for John, the beginning of Jesus can't be reduced to a nativity scene, so it wouldn't exist. If this were the only gospel account of Christmas, our sanctuary would look very different this morning. John doesn't take us to a cow manger in Bethlehem. There is no baby in this Christmas story, and there is no suggestion of earthly parents. There is no virgin. So the choir would have had to have sung a different song today. Unlike that familiar story we read last night in Luke, where you and I are introduced to a very personal place, John's Gospel introduces us to a very cosmic Christ. And I personally like John's version very much. For the Gospel writer of John, Jesus has always existed. There has never been a time for John's writer without the existence of the Christ. Jesus was there before all time and space, and Jesus was present when God called the cosmos into being. And Jesus was life. John calls this life in Jesus the light of the world, the light of the people. Now, my dictionary, and yes, I still use a dictionary, but I'm not quick enough to get to Wikipedia. My dictionary says that light is the form of electromagnetic radiation that acts upon the retina of the eye and the optic nerve making sight possible. This energy is transmitted at a velocity of about 186,000 miles per second. Isn't that exciting to know? Since I'm not a scientist or an eye doctor, that's not really important to me. I don't really care. But here's what I do know from real life about light. When my wife, Chris, turns the bedroom light on in the morning and I'm still in bed, the penetration is annoying. <laughs> and so is it when she then asks me something stupid, but we won't get into that. <laughs> And then even when I try to pull the covers over my head, that light still seems to, seems to seep through the blankets and it strikes my eyes. It feels like I can't get away from it. The whole world must be on light. That 100 watt light, light, light bulb feels like the entire earth is ablaze. And yet I know, I know, that the light in our bedroom is probably only affecting Chris and myself and maybe the neighbors or that voyeuristic person who moved in down the street. I the other thing I know about light is that in the summer when the sun comes up in the morning and shines very brightly, it really, really lights things up. Did you know that the diameter of the sun is 864,400 miles? Who knew that? I didn't think so. <laughs> That's a huge space. The sun produces a lot, a lot of light, and it penetrates deeply into our lives and into our world. But you know what? For all the light that the sun is able to produce, it still can't light up the entire world all at the same time. 
You know as well as I do that when it's light on one side of the earth, it's dark on the other side. Being referred to as the light of the world and the light that illuminates the cosmos clearly suggests a powerful, energy-efficient, all-penetrating light source that puts our bedroom light and even the sun to shame. But someone like that morning light that breaks into my bed, God, in the person of Jesus, breaks into our daily lives and shines on us in the darkness, in, even in the darkness of our world. Now, I've had the unfortunate opportunity to attend two personal funerals in the past two weeks. And through them, I was again reminded how evil, how the evil of heart disease and an aneurysm is still a part of our world. But at both of those fields, in two different places, I was also reassured that no matter how hard evil tries to overcome the life, in the end, it fades. Despite the sadness of those two funerals in my life, despite the darkness that each of you have experienced in the last few weeks, we are here this morning celebrating our Savior's birth. The light can't be extinguished. The light shines on all of humanity and brings salvation to everyone. The Gospel of John depicts Jesus as that kind of light. Light that radiates divine truth and knowledge and wisdom and justice. For John, just like the other Gospel writers, Jesus reveals the power of God to us. Jesus became flesh, took on human form, so that the glory and the brightness of God could be equally and uniformly revealed to all, all people of the cosmos. As dark as our days can sometimes get, we are reminded in John's Christmas story today that there is no spot on earth where the light of God goes out. There is no spot on earth where the light of God dwells in preference to another. It is uniform light. And unlike the sun, God's salvific light is always shining. The Christmas Jesus in the Gospel of John is a Jesus that is intertwined with God from the beginning to help us hold on to the hope that indeed, God is full of grace, and mercy, and love. Jesus is the true light of the world, who comes with the power to enlighten every one of us. Merry Christmas to you. Amen.